You want to know something interesting? In the 2023 VCT season, there were two teams that really stood out from the pack, but were polar opposites. Let's call them Team A and Team B. Now, Team A boasted a map win percentage of 79% for a portion of the season, which is understandably a very dominant number. I mean, like winning almost 80% of all your maps, they had to be one of the best teams in the league. On the other hand, Team B boasted a map win percentage of only 28%, a pretty abysmal record, not even winning a third of their games. Now, looking at those numbers, you might rightfully assume that the team with an 80% map win record is someone like Loud or Fnatic, some of the best teams of the year. Maybe DRX, they're always dominating domestically, right? And you might also be guessing that the team with the 28% map win record is probably someone like Crew, who everyone knows was one of the worst teams of the year. And this is why I sometimes love and hate Valorant, because if you haven't guessed it by now, yup, these are both the same team. Welcome back to VCT Team Preview, the only series breaking down all the VCT America's teams heading into the 2024 season, given of course that I do have enough time to cover all the teams, because man, February 16 is coming fast. Now taking into account what I said in the intro, Crew were definitely one of the biggest anomalies in VCT this year. They not only had the single worst record in the league, they couldn't even manage to win one singular match in the regular season and ended with a 0-9 record. Coming into the season, their roster wasn't solidified up until the very start of the VCT Americas League. At lock-in and various tournaments in the 2022 offseason, they were playing with players Zand and Axity. But come the start of the 2023 regular season, the team would opt to play with longtime core Kesnit, Klaus, and Nags, alongside newcomers Davies and Melzer. Once the regular season had kicked off, though, they hit the ground running. Oh, wait, my bad. I meant they just hit the ground. And they're gonna take the series overall. Absolutely crushing second half there, we see. MWR comes in for the defuse, they fight back, and they win this series. And the spray then comes in for Jogimo. EG will manage to get their first victory in the VCT Americas. And a hundred thieves in a dominant fashion for map number three, a well-earned series. Closer than the one. And an Archie win it. So damn clean. 13 4 being that scoreline. They all fall just like that loud bend, but they don't break, and the perfect series continues. And it's a shorty, it's a shorty, it's a shorty to win the round, to win the map, to win the series of bliss. Oh my gosh. To end it. Can he do it like this? First misses, the second does not. A Red Bull clutch is sending the stage. Right now, crew need a miracle. They need to find the fight, they need to react and it's and they just can't do it. Cloud nine to take the series. A bit of adrenaline coursing through the veins of all of the Cloud9 fans out there as they thought this was a match that looked like they were going to lose. Now don't get me wrong, they were a bad team, but the 09 record might lead you to believe that they were worse than what they actually were. Out of their 9 losses in the regular season, 5 of them finished with a 1-2 map scoreline and of these matches, at least one of the maps lost either finished in a 13-11 or overtime scenario. And even looking into their 0-2 losses across the season, they were also very close, often finishing with the team picking up at least 10 plus rounds. They were putting up solid fights against the many of the best teams in the league. There's certainly a universe where a couple of those games go into their favor and we definitely be looking at the context of their season a lot differently. But as fate would have it, none of these games ever went into their favor. When looking at what went wrong for Crew, a lot of it actually had to do with matters outside the server. For most of the season, Crew actually didn't have their head coach Adam present due to visa issues. Their six-man Axity actually had to step in to help coach while Adam did what he could for the team remotely. Added to that, the team also didn't have a completely stable roster. As mentioned earlier, they actually played the first event of the year 
lock in Sao Paulo with players Zand and Axidi, but due to rumored internal team drama, Zand was removed from the team in place of Kesnit and Axidi was placed on their bench. In week 5 of the season, Davies was out due to injury and Axidi had to step into his place. This of course couldn't have come at a worse time as in week 5 the team had to go up against Loud, the best team in the region. But despite the fact, they put up a strong fight, finishing the series having taken a map and lost the next two 13-11 and 13-10. Due to his performance, the team opted to keep Axidy in the lineup but still wanted Davies in, so when he came back, they actually knocked down Nags to their bench, who then, for some reason, came back in the last game of the season. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what they were thinking with some of these moves, but when you're losing as much as they were, I find it hard to blame them for trying things out. Zine was doing those uh, <laughs> aim labs there just before. Nice little no-scope long range. Okay, not too bad though, at least answered back by Cruz. Spike on the back of Kesdit, three kills. And a double swing right after. Both players are there on the defense, pushing down. Buki. Oh, he gets it! Kesdit answers right back! Dash up drive. A 1v2, a winnable one. Oh. Not able to land the shot from oh! the first place. Oh, but that off's gonna oh, he has one more. He's got one blade. Oh! Kaz here with the shot to inject some life. Despite the losses, the team at least had a bright spot in Kesnit. Throughout the season, he actually managed to hold on to a 154 ADR, the fourth highest in the league. He's arguably the best duelist to come out of the Latam region in VCT's short history, and he was one of the main reasons a lot of their games were even close to begin with. As for the rest of the team, for the most part, they really struggled. Their numbers were below average and they really just couldn't keep up with the rest of the competition in the field. Despite that fact, there weren't many glaring issues with the team. Their biggest issue was of course their inability to close out maps. You can easily chalk this up to a couple multi-factored reasons. Playing under the pressure, their IGL Mels are running out of ideas late into a map, not having their coach present throughout the season, and simply not playing their best when it mattered most. With their 0-9 record, they failed to qualify for the Masters Tokyo event, but technically still had a shot at champions by playing in the NA Last Chance qualifiers. But of course, with their abysmal record and the prospect of facing respectable teams like Cloud9 and Leviathan, nobody expected them to do anything in LCQ. Because even if they overcome it, they're just going out the tournament anyway, so they're not accomplishing anything by winning. Yeah, what, you get your pity win over MIBR and then you go What if they go anyway. on a run? <laughs> we go on a run? <laughs> that was going to be... The no, zero no. and 9 team is going to go on a run. They've had a month no, and a half. No, I mean, I'm sure. I think it's possible, Josh. Look at this. It's chosen finally opens up the site for a bit. The show cover up. Klaus also spikes that down. The, pl the plot coming down, and that's a 14 and ace for Klaus. Traps are create pressure another way. And here in mid, they will. Oh. Off the timeout, it's actually crew pushing aggressively, catching at Bar Z. Up on the attack, Travelers are spawning. Chosen as once again a firing range through the opening doors. Yeah. Boombox fully flash, so it cannot clear, but Kesa just swings out for that frag. Another perfect flash. But Mazin still dancing around. Only good for that one kill. Did you see another slash player stuck at the screens? Chased down, hunted down, and dropped by Melzer in the end. And they absolutely flew through the NA last chance qualifiers. Not only did they not lose a single match in their run, but also finished their wins with an average score of 13 to 7. They weren't just winning, they were bodying their opponents. This is where they boasted that 79% map win rate percentage I was talking about earlier. The team looked revitalized. They actually started playing Valorant with proper fundamentals. They were taking map control aggressively and confidently. They had great ideas with which to approach certain compositions. They had solid protocols for reactions against teams. It felt as though I was watching a completely different team compete. Their rotations looked well-timed, and their retakes were on point. I don't know what this team did over the break between the regular season and the LCQ, but it worked. Maybe it was simply the ability to go home to see their families, maybe it was the time giving them a chance to get a mental reset, or maybe it was being able to finally prep with their coach in person. Whatever it was, it had me believing that they could do serious damage at Champions 2023. After the run they just went on, 
they had real momentum heading into the tournament. And blitzing down to B, but look at the rotation. Brewer here. That's it's a foot race all the way. This has been the story of this B site. Can they get back into position in time? Kesley goes through the smoke and he's punished for it. In fact, every player on that swing is being punished. Oh. Davies, he doesn't even realize how much control is gone. It's the beginning of the end. Giants within their grasp. The final player standing in their way has been spotted. Prime will be the one to take it this time as we go 14 to 12, 2 to 0. They bombed out of the tournament, not winning a single map in their two matches against Paper Rex and Giants. To be fair, Paper Rex were a juggernaut team that they were likely never going to beat. And when it came to Giants, it felt like they went back to their old ways, with two painstakingly close maps, but unable to close them out. And that was their 2023 season. Talk about a season of highs and lows. So how will this team do in 2024? Honestly, I'm not very hopeful. I think that LCQ run was honestly the worst thing that could have happened to them as management probably thinks they can somehow recapture that magic and didn't make the necessary roster moves this offseason to really help the team. For 2024, crew are looking to field a roster of Melzer, Kesnit, Klaus, MTA, and Shy. When it comes to MTA, not much is known about this guy. He's never played a tier 1 VCT match in his life or been on a real team until now. He played mostly Jet and Rays last year for Furious Gaming in the Challengers League Latam. He wasn't a top rated player across both splits and considering Kesnit is on the team, I'm not sure where he fits into this roster. He's not a better Rays or Jet than Kesnit. But looking over at Shy, he's actually a really solid pickup. Despite having a pretty mediocre season stats-wise, he was one of the brighter spots on Leviathan last year. He'll most likely take up the Sentinel role for the team this year, having played tons of Killjoy last year. Honestly, my main issue with the team is that the main core remains unchanged. Yes, they finally dropped Nags, someone they probably should have kicked off the team a long time ago. But the core of Kesnit, Klaus, and the IGLing of Melzer really just gives me nothing to be excited about. I don't really expect much from MTA, and while Shy was a solid player for Leviathan last year, that team played with a very specific structure, and it's not easy to tell how well he'll do now that he's out of that structure. Looking at the rest of the competition in the league, it's hard for me to rank them even middle of the pack. Yes, they had a great run in LCQ, but they also had a historically bad regular season. It's really hard for me to believe that they can replicate the success of LCQ going into VCT this year when considering the Americas League is even more stacked than last year. They also lost one of their best players this offseason in Davies, who unfortunately passed away in September of 2023. Ya habían pasado dos, creo que no logré eh, nunca cualificar y aquí estamos después de un LSQ que fue, digamos, eh, milagroso. Y nada, eso eh, para mí es un sueño. I honestly think they would have probably kept Davies if it was an option and not have picked up Shy from Leviathan. I'm looking to place this team, unfortunately, in the bottom three position of the standings. It's going to be them, EG, and MIBR down there. I'm just not 100% sure in which order. The rest of the teams in the league simply have either more talent, better strats, better coordination, or some combination of all three. It's looking to be a tough year once again for crew. But even with all that said, this team has done some incredible things in the past. They've truly created some of Valorant's most legendary moments, like eliminating Sentinels at Champions 2021. Yeah, the tens just ran in the there with the Guardian. Away. With the Guardian! <laughs> playing arguably the best game of bind against Gambit. Jump on top and try for the assist. They're walking out and it looks like they've done it. Klaus playing behind the smoke and there's the opening. As they come around the corner, they're not oh, expecting you to still that? be aggressive. And he's gonna what? get all five. An ace for Chronicle is left on the clock. They need to plant the spike One now. They're getting it down and it looks like they've got the round <laughs> uh -oh. in the bag. And going on that incredible LCQ run. Go on a run! 
That was gonna be <laughs> the oh, zero no. and nine team is gonna go on a run. If there's one thing history has taught me about crew, it's that they might be down, but they're never quite out. 